Hi there, my name is Pastor Veronica Smith, and you are joining Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Colleen, Texas for our Wednesdays in Lent worship series. You can worship with us during Lent on Wednesdays at 11.30 a.m. and 6.45 p.m. The worship service is available on our Facebook page. You can also find it on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and look up Emmanuel Lutheran Church Colleen, and you'll look for the Luther Rose symbol. And you can also find it on our website, www.cleanemmanuel.com. Just a heads up, while you are getting settled in, our scripture passage for today is from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. So if you want to get your favorite Bible and look it up, Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. Of course, you can also look it up on your favorite Bible app. Today, I am using Bible Gateway and the New Revised Standard Version, or NRSV, which is what our church-wide body, the ELCA, uses for our lectionaries. Um, that's what I'll be using today to uh, read to you from Hebrews. But again, Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 10 is our passage for today. While you look that up or um, grab your Bible, just a couple of reminders that this upcoming Sunday begins Holy Week and our Holy Week journey. So on Sunday, we will have at the uh, church in our church parking lot at 11 a.m., we will be having a Palm Sunday worship service, which will have um, some special music, and we will have a children's message and communion, and then the service will end with a palm parade through the parking lot, waving of palms, and hopefully some horn honking and some Hosanna shoutings. So that's what how we will be kicking off Holy Week. Then on Wednesday of next week, we will conclude our Wednesdays in Lent series. Um, our Love Life Live Lent uh, program will be uh, coming to an end. We'll have one more Wednesday in Lent, 11.30 a.m. and 6.45 p.m. Then on Thursday, we will have Monday Thursday worship um, online, 11.30 a.m. and 6.45 p.m. Good Friday service, 11.30 a.m., 6.45 p.m., catching a trend there about our timing. Those will be available online. And of course, as always, when something premieres, once it premieres, it's then available for um, there on out. So if you log on at 12.30 p.m., hoping to catch something at uh, that was there at 11.30, don't worry, it's there and available for you. And it's uh, available on our Facebook website and our YouTube channel. On Easter Vigil, the day before Easter, we will be at the church cemetery from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and we'd love to invite you to come and bring fresh or silk or dried flowers to help decorate our gazebo and cross at the cemetery um, to, uh, to sort of spend some time in vigil. There'll be some opportunities for prayer and um, to just spend some time in contemplation at the space and um, to consider what it might have been like for the disciples as they waited in the upper room um, for the prophecy of Jesus' return to come true. Then Easter Sunday, we will return to the church cemetery, much like the women did at Jesus's tomb. And we will be there to celebrate the empty tomb together with our Easter worship service, which begins at 11 a.m. in the church cemetery. There is going to be special music. There is going to be something for the kids. And there will be lots of shoutings of a very special A word that we'll save until Lent is over. I hope you can join us for um, any or all of those amazing experiences we are going to have for Holy Week. But for now, I invite you to uh, prepare your hearts and minds for our worship service as we continue in our Lenten series. We begin our worship with the prayer of the day. Let us pray together. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood, you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation, you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. I invite you into a moment of silence for prayer, reflection, and confession of sin at this time. Fountain of living water, pour out 
your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, our sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Again, a reminder that our reading today is from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. And I am going to pull up that reading here. This is the word of God according to Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Amen. The reading begins. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. We are fed by the word of God. More than bread, we are given life. Amen. So this reading from Hebrews is not a super common one. It's certainly not one that, um, that we hear a whole lot, and yet it's really good for us to, to hear it, to, to sort of get some of these moments um, in scripture and in the story of Jesus that we don't always hear regularly. The, um, the book of Hebrews is unique in that we aren't entirely sure who wrote it. For a very long time, it was assumed that it was written by Paul, but we really don't know for sure if Paul is a writer. In fact, many theologians and scholars uh, believe now that there's no way that Paul wrote it, although it does send a similar message to, uh, to people that, that Paul was known for sending. Um, the book of Hebrews was written for people who were Hebrew. It was written for people who were like Jesus. Jesus is Hebrew in origin. That is his, um, his family connection, his faith. He was Jewish. Um, you know, you'd be surprised the number of people who are shocked at that. But um, what this book is all about is helping people have a foundation for understanding the value of work in the world. That is one of the major themes of the book of Hebrews. And it's really founded on, on one basic essential message. Listen to Jesus. That's it. Just listen to Jesus. And that seems really small. Like it seems like a very small thing, like, and, and maybe something that, you know, sort of makes sense. Like, well, of course you want to listen to Jesus, but you have to understand for these folks that, that Jesus is kind of changing everything. He wasn't kind of, he was changing everything for these people, for them to hear the message that he was sharing and for them to hear the message that others were sharing about Jesus being the son of God and the savior. Um, this was really not something that people could sort of handle because they were so accustomed to what they knew and their faith and their story. And they didn't really, they didn't really feel confident in their faith, especially in the beginning. And so this reminder to listen to Jesus sort of helps them to, to stop um, being consumed by the pressure to turn back to their beliefs prior to knowing Jesus, um, which is what, uh, which is what they do. They need to hear this lesson of Jesus is the King. He has been named the high priest by God. 
He is the ultimate sacrifice for sin. He is going to, to connect us in our human lives to, to God. And we will be made new. We will be forgiven. We will be blessed um, by the knowledge of this relationship and connection. So it's really important that, you know, that we hear this message too, because we do often need that reminder. Um, I love, um, I love that this lesson in Hebrews is sort of giving, giving, giving some information that helps us to process what it is that we are hearing in our faith lives, what it is uh, that we are getting as far as messages concerning Jesus Christ as the son of God. Um, the book of Hebrews is sort of a practical guide for new believers, which is a lot of why, you know, initially people thought that this was some of Paul's work, although later they figured it wasn't, is because that is so much of what Paul writes. Paul consistently writes messages to different communities of people saying, hey, let me tell you about Jesus and how much he loves you and what it means to follow him. He gives instructions for following Christ. And this Hebrews, that's what it is. It's not just listen to Jesus, but here is why you should listen to Jesus. Here is some practical help for you. Um, for how you should live your life, how to um, how to fight back against um, all those opportunities for you to doubt your faith and your belief in God and your belief in Jesus Christ, how to to work and live and take Sabbath and be faithful to your own body and be a good steward of yourself and those around you how to serve other people, how to care for others, how to love your neighbor, how to survive difficult times, how to be peaceful, um, how to be persevering and be hospitable and all of these things, how to be good stewards, how to be faithful and find joy in places where Christ isn't prominent. And you might listen to that and think to yourself, well, well, how in the world does that connect to me? But the reality is for a lot of people, you aren't working in an environment where it is safe or comfortable to talk about your faith. And I'm fortunate in the way that my role in what I do as pastor, it is, it is part of my vocation to be able to talk about God and the role that Jesus plays in my life. And so it makes sense to have those conversations with my coworkers and with my family, but that isn't always true for everyone. And it hasn't always been true for me. Jesus was here with us and walked among us and was able to learn what it was like to have a faithful experience and a faithful life as human beings on this earth. And he learned that so that he could help us figure out how to navigate the waters of being a believer in this world. So it's great that we have the book of Hebrews and other books of the Bible that um, give us these, these peaks into what it means to be a faithful follower and how we can do that. Um, and so um, Hebrews, of course, is not the only one. And if you remember the past several weeks we've done, um, we had a lesson from first Peter, we had, um, you know, letters to the Romans, the letter to the people of Corinth, um, the Ephesians. If you notice, there's been a theme that these, um, uh, during this season of Lent on these Wednesdays that the scripture we've been reading have been the epistles. An epistle is a letter. It's something written to a group of people. And the important thing to understand about the epistles in the new Testament is that they were letters written to people like us everyday people who had regular jobs and um, had regular families who had regular problems. And it was to help have a bridge, a bridge between these big challenging lessons that Jesus was teaching to the people and, and to have them kind of filter down a little bit to say, Hey, when I heard this lesson, it was really hard for me too. And I understand how hard it is. Let me help you understand what it can mean for you in your life. It's really amazing that we have these letters because as much as we like to think we know it all, or we have it all figured out, we really don't. 
And we can read about these, we read these letters written by people who, who understood how difficult it could be for people like us. The epistles, they're for us. They are for people who struggle every day to find ways to go on their faith journey in, in a way that is, is healthy and feels supportive and, um, and helps us to be better, um, and to love deeper and, um, be able to face the incredible challenges that, um, that get in the way of our journeys, um, all the time. So I hope that you might consider taking a deeper look and exploring some of the epistles, um, these letters to different groups of people throughout the new Testament, um, and explore what they might mean for you in your life. Um, you don't need to put yourself in the shoes of other people because someone else is putting themselves in your shoes. And that's, what's really amazing about these letters. It doesn't matter really who wrote them. Um, did Paul? Great. Didn't he? Doesn't matter because the fact of the matter is, is these letters reach us. They come from a way that helps us go on our journeys in, um, in ways that can, that can help strengthen us and get us through when things seem hard and give us, um, give us reasons to celebrate and find joy in life as well. So I hope that you will explore that um, in your prayer life and in your spiritual life and in opportunities you have to read scripture that you might take a look as well at, um, at the uh, book of Hebrews and the other uh, letters that we have in the Bible that help guide us in our faith lives. Not much has changed over the past several thousand years. We may look a little different, dress a little different, eat and drink a little different, but our faith lives are the same. They're journeys that have ups and downs and easy parts and hard parts and journeys that are never made alone. They're journeys that are made with Christ beside us, walking with us wherever we go. With that, I invite you to join me for the prayers of the people. After each petition, you will hear me say, uh, hear us, O God. And your response is, your mercy is great. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. I invite you into a moment of silence for prayer and reflection at this time. Relying on the promises, oh, sorry. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world and all nations instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power, but maintain justice, sustain soldiers and guide those who command them that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer, especially all those listed on our prayer list and all those who are named either out loud or in the silence of our hearts at this time. May you grant them all respite and renewal. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You called followers to tend Jesus' body in death, sustain hospice workers and funeral directors, bless this congregation's ministries at times of death. 
especially all those who help support others in times of grief. Especially today, we lift before you the family and friends of Henry Kielman. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now I invite you to pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Friends, when you go, go in peace and share the good news. Lent is love. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today for um, our Lent is Love Wednesdays in Lent worship series. It was a pleasure having you. Next week, next Wednesday, 11.30 a.m. and 6.45 p.m. will be all our final uh, Wednesdays in Lent worship service. Um, that uh, scripture passage for next week will be Philippians 2 verses five through 11. And I hope that you will be able to join me for that or join me for some of the wonderful Holy Week events that we have planned for you. Remember friends, God loves you and so do I. Bye-bye. <laughs>